So I've been playtesting the Golden Order Greatsword for a little while now. Just about to kind of sit down and make the video. And then of course, the night before I do, the sword itself gets a nice fat buff. Nice. Before this buff, the weapon skill itself, Establish Order, was kind of a meme. It was pretty funny to troll people with it. And actually, it was pretty effective since it had hyper armor on the initial cast. Hey, bro, bro chill. Chill, 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 chill. But now with the buffs, well, you and I are going to be diving into how good this weapon can be in this Sacred Moon build video. The latest version of the Golden Order Greatsword within 1.04 is that the weapon skill for Established Order is faster now. Not as fast as the Moon Veil, but it's definitely packing more of a punch, a lot longer range, and it has uses outside of what Moon Veil can normally do with that Hyper Armor. The Golden Order Greatsword was reforged from the Dark Moon Greatsword. So the weapon skill that it has, Establish Order, the second part of it actually mimics the Dark Moon Greatsword's Crescent Projectile Slash. This slash is extremely awesome. It travels really far, covers a wide range, goes through enemies, and if it clips a wall, it will continue to shoot forward. Unlike something like the Moon Veil, which has a much shorter range and will dissipate as soon as it hits a wall. But the best part of this weapon is that it is infused with the Giga Chad energy of Gold Mask. Yes! You do a cool little pose and do an AoE damage around you with the initial weapon skill of Established Order. This skill does pretty good damage all around the caster so it can stop people from even swinging at you. But even if they swing before that AoE explosion comes out, you have hyper armor so you're safe from that. And you look really cool while doing it. The one biggest issue that I've seen in testing is that on the follow-up swing of Established Order, if you use the auto-targeting, sometimes you'll shoot at the ground and it won't travel across horizontally all the way. It is an unfortunate side effect of the targeting system in this game. And of course, with the follow-up swing, you can be interrupted out of that one, so you have to pick and choose when to use it wisely. It is by no means a free weapon in PvP, but this build is more PvE-centric anyways, and this weapon is amazing for PvE. It has a little bit of everything that will help you clear through most of this game. The small enemies that have quick attacks that can stagger you, the first part of established order tackles that, and it provides a flinch or a knockback. Now, the second cast is very good on big enemies because it's a multi-hit. Not only does the beam hit, but the blade also hits for additional damage, and it causes a heavy stagger or knockback, so it's gonna stagger or outright just knock down most enemies within this game. And of course, lastly, it is a greatsword and has a greatsword moveset. It's not the craziest thing, but you got the right amount of power in your initial swings. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. So this weapon is fun to use. Now, before we talk about the additional parts of this kit, let's go into the stats and do a quick favor for me, support your boy, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell if you wanna see more build videos like these. Okay, so for the starting class, I would recommend the Prophet. You don't have to start out, the, out of this class, and you can go further than level 150. There's no optimal reason why I'm stopping at 150, it's just what I'm doing. Uh, the community may have a soft cat that they have agreed upon. I haven't been able to play that much recently, so I haven't kept up. It's just something I want to stay at until I beat the game initially. And yes, I still have not beaten the game yet, so... I am missing some fashion pieces and spells that hopefully I'll get pretty soon. Anyways, on screen I have the level 150, level 100, and level 50 stats for this build. As you can see in the early parts of uh, the game, level 50, level 100, we're going to focus more on dexterity and getting our vigor and endurance up just so we can make the, e the early game much easier for us. I try to get to 21 faith as soon as possible so you can abuse Dragon Bolt Blessing. We'll talk more about that in the spells. But yeah, I would definitely, after level 100, just hard dump a lot of stats into faith. A lot of the stats that I left at is not actually like, for example, Vigor is 35 and Dexterity ends at 45. That's not going to be the true stat since we're going to be using Radagon's Source Seal in our accessories, which bumps it up by 5 points each. So you're looking at 40 Vigor and 50 Dexterity. And for Vigor, Endurance, and Mind, you can do it however you want. I try to put more Mind in this build at 25, so that way you can spam cast with the second weapon I'll be talking about and the 
establish order skill alongside some of your other incantations so that way you will be able to spam your spells and abilities with reckless abandon and i've been told many many times this vigor is too low for level 150 and this build sucks because the vigor is low well look man if you like the story of let me solo her or the jarnished then yeah vigor is a personal choice if you feel like you get hit a lot and you die really easily put on more vigor if you're okay with potentially getting one shot it in later bosses in the game and feel comfortable having to dodge more moves then yeah go ahead and stick with lower vigor it's up to you uh, this is just my template you can up and down it however you are comfortable with it is a personal choice and just remember that the more you level up so if you decide to go past level 150 you will get more base resistances which helps you get tankier which leads me to say if you are going past level 150 just go ahead and try to get faith and dexterity to 80. that's like the two important thing and then everything else is fair game for you uh, in this build you're going to be at 75 faith and 50 dexterity 50 is like the soft soft cap before their last soft cap so I, I try to get to that threshold with this build and i'm just barely close to missing out on the faith but i'll explain why i decided to kind of go for that 50 dexterity over faith and that is with our two alternative weapons now for the sacred seal of choice for your offhand you can choose a lot of different ones depending on how you want to play in the build video you see i'm using the gravel stone seal because i was using more lightning magic in my arsenal but if you have a preference for something like let's say the beastal uh, incantations go ahead and use the claw mark seal it really doesn't make a big difference it depends on your spell list some of my earlier builds have been using a lot of the beastal incantations because they are really good and really cheap so for this video i wanted to use more of the lightning spells it is up to you how you want to play with your spell arsenal and we'll talk more about that in a little bit but yeah just know for seals you do have a lot of choices as long as it matches with whatever spell arsenal you want to run okay on to the sub weapons i have the halo scythe as my secondary weapon because it covers the long 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 range and it lets you spam the projectile all right all right trillion calm down two can play that game he's stuck to a disc One of the things that I find kind of awkward with the Golden Order Greatsword is that you cannot consistently pressure people at a long distance. This goes for bosses and enemies as well, so by having the Halo Scythe, you're able to spam a damaging weapon that scales off of faith and dexterity from a distance. And that's why we go for more dexterity than faith, or at least try to get the second soft cap for dexterity so that the Halo Scythe can do pretty good damage. And I also have another alternative weapon on the offhand actually, and that is the Blade of Calling Dagger. It is a more heavily faith scaling dagger that is not as cool as the Black Knife, but it allows you to surprise any enemies that are fast and quick while you're holding the Golden Order Greatsword. You can swap to this dagger on your offhand and use the offhand slashes to get those quick fast attacks to stagger enemies. But it's a really minor part of the build. I barely ever use it. Because the immense satisfaction I get from posing at people with established order using the Golden Order Greatsword is just too good, man. It's, it's so satisfying. All right, let's go over incantation since we are going high faith in this build, 75. You have so many options, you can do whatever you want with this spell list. But don't worry, I won't leave you hanging. I'm gonna recommend you four core spells that I think you should consider equipping at all times. One is Golden Vow, which increases your attack and defense. This also increases the Golden Order Great Torch's weapon skills, attack power. So of course, we put that in there because we like big PP numbers, all right? Now secondly, I love Beastal Vitality, Beastal Sling, and Dragon Bolt's Blessing. Beastal Vitality is really simple but really effective. It just gives you a small health regeneration over time. So while you're adventuring, you're always healing. Saves you on some potions. So yeah. On long treks, this spell could really come in handy. And then Beastal Sling essentially acts like the Blade of Calling gimmick that I mentioned to you before. It's a quick attack that you can use from your offhand to finish off an enemy or interrupt their movements and i really 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 like this spell most people do just because of how fast it is and how much range it covers but we switch between this and blade of calling if we're low on fp during our adventures and lastly of course 
Dragon Bolt Blessing is really good to counter stat ailments and it lets minor attacks or normal attacks that are not from like colossal greatswords bounce off of you. While you still take some damage and stagger a little bit, this opens up the enemy to getting slammed by your attacks as they are staggered themselves. For the Golden Order Greatsword, it is not that important since you do have Hyper Armor in the initial cast of Established Order. However, if you are low on FP and you are fighting through a zone with a lot of enemies that are annoying, this could be a good way to secure hits with like a jump attack or a heavy swing by letting them just bounce off of you first and then hitting them while they're staggered. For offensive spells, I really recommend Hone Bolt as a mainstay. On my other builds, check them out, link in the description. I actually always equip the Ashes of War Thunderbolt onto a secondary weapon because it is such a good skill to just throw out there to finish off enemies. It's fast, it has good range, and if you are fighting in PvP, in the thick of a fight, people will not expect it and it'll be hard to dodge because it's not coming at them from you. And three spells that I would recommend. I thought Death Lightning was going to be good, but I think the range is too small for it to be really effective. The cool thing is that this build allows you to use the Black Blade, the Lance Axis Glaive, and Fortis Axis Lightning Spear. If you have any of those three incantations or all three of them, I really recommend playing around with them. They are a lot of fun. They look really cool, but if you are still waiting to get to the later parts of the game and get to those bosses, don't worry, I got you. Frozen Lightning Spear is a good alternative to hold you over until you can unlock your late game lightning spells. Now lastly, let's talk about Talisman's mainstay number one, Radagon Sword Seal. It's probably the best talisman in the game. 40 free levels, can't really go wrong with that. Secondly, we're gonna go with Alexander's Shard. More damage to our weapon skills, so uh, establish order, Halo Scythe, we like big damages, we like one-shotting stuff, that's why it's here. Third, we're going to be using the Sacred Scorpion Charm just for more holy damage. The Golden or the Greatsword, whether it's the weapon art or the swings itself, it deals holy damage. So this just buffs the, that Greatsword entirely, as well as the Halo Scythe. And the Blade of Calling, so all of your main weapons that you're going to be using in this build are buffed by this Sacred Scorpion Charm. And lastly, you can use whatever you want that's comfort, whether it's the Green Turtle Talisman or the Filigree Crest or the Ancestral Spirit Horn, depending on how you want to play. So those are my recommendations. Become a Moon Knight today with this build. No, not that Moon Knight. <sighs> no, not that Moon Knight either, all right? Not Rani's Moon Knight or Marvel's Moon Knight. With this build, you're going to become the Gold Mask yes! Moon Knight. The one and only true perfect order Moon Knight. Alright, I'll see you next time. Versana signing out.